Hey, Dame, I know you've done this so many times. Uh, you know, big comebacks, making clutch plays and stuff. But I'm wondering, do they all kind of blend together or do they stand out? Does each one have kind of its own story? And if so, what do you think you'll remember about this one? I mean, I think they used to, but I mean, I, now when I see like replays of some of the, these, these moments, I forget about them. Like I, <laughs> it's some that I see and I, I just don't remember them until I see them. Um, <clears throat> but I think this one is, you know, um, it kind of felt like the OKC game in the playoffs, you know, minus the game winner because with so little time, it was like a double digit deficit and we just kind of had to scratch and claw our way back into it defensively and get stops. And we needed things to, to go our way, you know, um, B.I. misses two free throws. Um, then we come down back on the defensive end and on the inbound pass, they fumble it out of bounds. So like some things had to go our way on top of us, um, you know, putting stops together and making timely plays on defense and offense. So um, I think because of how it happened and the position that we were in down the stretch, uh, you know, this will be one that I remember. Yeah. Next question is coming from Casey Holdall with trailblazers.com. Damien, uh, what was your mindset? I guess it was about six minutes to play in that game. You guys are down 17 points. Um, uh, you stayed in in the fourth quarter, something you usually sit. Uh, I'm assuming that was maybe a discussion you had between you and Terry. So I guess just how did you have to 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 try to, to stay in the fourth quarter in the game? And where were you at it with about six minutes to play? Uh, at the end of the third, you know, I, I forget where we was down at the end of the third, maybe 13 or something like that. Maybe it was like 85 to 72 or 95 to 82. I can't remember. Um, but I remember when the, the clock expired and I was thinking about turning to Terry and telling him, just leave me in for the fourth. Um, but I was like, you know, sometimes in these situations, they put they, they bench in and our bench, you know, has a good four or five minute stretch. And then we cut into the lead and then I can come in after a few minutes of rest, but I didn't say nothing to him. We didn't even talk about it. Um, and he took me out and then he put me back in like two minutes into the quarter, which is early for my, my normal rotation. Um, but I kind of assumed he would do that, you know, just because it was a big game for us. Um, and we, we needed to go for it. And he put me back in, you know, maybe three or four minutes early from where he usually does. And the game was like, you know, it could have went either way. Like we could end up going deeper into that league where we were down 18 or 20. Or we could, you know, come back early and try to make a push, you know. And I think he just made that call um, off instinct. And I was kind of thinking the same thing, you know. You know, when he called my name, I, I went back in and we made our run. Thanks, Dan. Next question is coming from Joe Becker with K2. Yeah, Dan, uh, Greg, congratulations uh, on the win tonight. Hey, I'm just curious, um, how hard is it for you to sleep and get home after exciting games like this that go right down to the end? I mean, whether it's a game like this or – any other game, when I get home, I'm pretty wired up usually. Um, just thinking about what we could have did or what I could have did or I didn't do this good enough. Or I, I'm playing basically the whole game back in my head on my car ride home. And then when I get home, by the time I eat and watch the game again and all these things, is you know, I look up sometimes and it's 1.30, 2 o'clock, and then I start watching boxing clips. And before I know it, it's 3 o'clock, and I'll be like, man, <laughs> go to sleep, but I'll, I'll be so wired up just from my mind going about the game and all that. So, um, you know, I don't think it'll be any different um, after this game. You know, I'll go home and it'll be the same process. Got it. Thank you. And my son will probably be up waiting too, so um, <laughs> he don't go to bed on time. Dwight Chains, NBC Sports, Northwest. Hey, Dame, on that last shot when you got fouled, you get the ball on the inbound pass. What are you trying to get to? And what did you have in mind, or is that just strictly ad lib at that point? I mean, I didn't have nothing in mind. I was just going off instinct. Um, <clears throat> you know, when I caught it, he, he, you know, tried to get into my body. So I knew he was, in his mind, he didn't want to let me get off a three. Um, you know, he didn't want to let me just raise up for three. So um, I knew it was six seconds left. So I, I put it on the floor to attack him. And I did that knowing that the defense would uh, converge and they would come to me. 
Uh, so I just, you know, I pulled up. I pulled up for the jumper because, you know, my shot had been feeling good. And um, I felt like I was getting a clean look. <clears throat> and he he contested it pretty aggressively. And he, I mean, he hit my arm. So um, I felt that contact and I saw the ball kind of going to the left. And, you know, I, I knew it was going to be a foul. If it wasn't, it would have been a, a, a bad missed call. But uh, I just wanted to get to a spot and raise up for a jumper. I did that. Uh, they called the foul. And, you know, I just had to make the free throws. Yeah, I wondered if for a brief second you were concerned about because sometimes it's really hard to get the foul calls late in games, even if you are, playing, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, I think I don't think that was a really hard one to call because I rose up and, you know, then my arms ended up going to the side because of the contact that he made. And you saw the ball go to the side as well. So. Um, but I mean, sometimes those calls do get missed, too, you know, when the referee is behind the play and uh, they missed the contact, but they didn't um, in that situation. So. You know, that was good for us. Chris Haynes, Yahoo Sports. Chris, uh, you're still muted. Be muted. My bad. My bad. Dame, what went through your mind on the, the in, New Orleans inbound play where the ball went out of bounds? You got the you got the last possession. And then also before that, Brandon Ingram missed two free throws. Uh, before he missed the two free throws, uh, I got to look at a three. We was down three. I got to look at a three. I rose up over, I think it was uh, Blesso and Steven Adams, uh, like a fadeaway three. And I felt like that was going in. You know, it felt really good when it left my hands and then I missed it. We fouled. B.I. missed the two free throws. And after he missed the two free throws, I was like, um, I'm sending this to overtime. You know, like I always think. And um you know, when Terry drew up the action, I was just going to a clear side and I just listened to how, you know, Stan was communicating with the team, how he wanted them to guard me. So I knew that they would chase me over the top. So they were getting ready to chase me. So instead of going over the top, I went underneath at an angle so I could make sure I got a catch and Melo skipped it over. Um, I thought about raising up quick um, to tie the game, but I didn't want to rush it when I knew I had time and that they would probably go for a foul because they were up three. You know, a lot of teams foul instead of giving you a chance to tie it and force overtime and send you to the line. Um, so as I was walking on the court, I kind of had it in mind, like, OK, if they go for the foul, we got enough time and we got a timeout left where if I hit two free throws and we foul. And even if they make those two free throws, we got a timeout and we can advance it and go for a tie, you know, for the last shot of the game. So I didn't I didn't rush that first three up and he reached out and fouled. I made those two free throws. Um, and then it was a one point game and on the inbound when I saw him fumble it back out of bounds and I knew that we had a, a we had like four seconds left and it was a one point game. At that point, I'm just telling myself, you know, just go for game, you know, just go win the game. It don't have to be a three, it's, you know, whatever shot you need to, to get to just win the game. And when we walked out, you know, CJ just tapped me on my back, like, go win it, you know, just make sure you go win it. And um, I got to my spot and, and drew a foul and, you know, that was game. Thank you, Glenn. Quick follow up from Jason Quick, and then we've got CJ uh, waiting. Hey, Dame. Uh, when you have games like this and you come through in the clutch, it it often masks the deficiencies of this team. And tonight, if you didn't do what you did, the story would be your guys' defense. Yeah. What, do, what are your thoughts on your defense and uh, and what needs to happen, you think, to to make it better? I, I realize that you guys played defense that led the comeback, but still wasn't where you guys needed to be. I think, um, you know, you're right. You know, I think sometimes we – one thing we're good at and we've always been good at is finding a way to win a game. Um, you know, but when you constantly find a way and you scratch and claw and find a way and you don't do – um, certain things defensively consistent enough, you know, you don't, it, you can't sustain finding a way all the time. You know, it's hard to win like that all the time. Um, and I think our, our biggest issue is not that we don't defend, is that we don't defend consistently, you know, and it's like, I, like I've been saying for the last few games, we'll have a good first quarter and a bad second and third. And then we'll have a good five minute stretch in the fourth when we have to win the game. And, by that time, the score is 120 to 121 or 125 to 120, whatever it is, because we don't we don't sustain a certain level of, of our defense. Um, and I think 
that's that's what the challenge is for us, you know, as a team and as an organization. It's like when we decide, or not when we decide, because I think we want to do it, but when we put it together um, mentally and we commit to that and become a better defensive team, that's when we'll we'll level up um, overall. Um, but you know, we we keep talking about it. You know, we got to defend better and we got to be more consistent. All these things, but I mean, we got to do it. I think that's what it comes down to. It's it's as simple as that. We got to come out here and be committed to it and and hold ourselves to that, you know, and as long as we don't do that, you know, we'll win games and we'll be who we've, we've always been. But when we, until we decide to take that step as a group, you know, it's not one or two people as a group, when we decide to take that step, I think that's when, um, you know, we'll look at games and be like, you know, we won that game by 15 or we won that game by 18 or, you know, people will expect a great effort from us in the playoffs. You know, I think that's when the the true respect will come when we're able to sustain a certain level defensively. Um, but on the on the other end, I think um, you would rather be a team that could find a way and you can say and continue to address that we need to get better at it than, you know, maybe some teams who would love to switch places with us that are struggling defensively as well. You want to just keep keep improving defensively because I do think we have our moments, you know, the numbers may not support us as a good defensive team, but I do think we have our moments and I do think we're capable. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's better to, to be trying to, to work towards it and addressing these things while you winning than, you know, maybe like last season where we struggled defensively and we way below 500 and it's just a frustrating season, you know? So I think right now um, it's good that we talk about it and that we, you know, we're bothered by it, um, but the, the action has to start to kick in if we want to seriously be a, a team that can get in the playoffs and, and make something happen.